The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. And little did we know that two months into this year, this pandemic virus would shut down the whole world. I don't know what you're you're feeling i don't know what you're thinking i don't know what you're personally going through but whatever it is god knows and god cares happy easter everyone boy i don't know about you but it's going to be a different easter this year you know i don't think we would have known this last year if anybody would have guessed that COVID-19 would have come into our world and come to our state and come to our nation and shut down literally most of the world, we would have all laughed and probably said, there's no way, but it has happened. And you know, I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're thinking today. And I don't know the challenges that you face today, but I want you to know this, there is a God in heaven who loves you and loves me. And how do I know that? Because he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And not only did he die, but three days later, he rose from the grave. He rose from that tomb and he is alive in heaven at the right hand of God the Father. That is Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate that today, Easter. Why? because Jesus rose from the grave and he is alive. And so we can have life also. You know, this COVID-19 thing, this whole pandemic, this, this virus is nasty and, and it's, it's, it's affecting us all. It affected me personally. I shared a little bit last week, but you know, I, I never knew or thought in the wildest dreams I had that we were going to face anything on our own in our family when it came to this. Yeah, we would avoid people or we would stay away from the germs, wash our hands every 15 minutes, which now I do more than ever, but I never thought it would touch us personally, but it did. Last week I shared how our son got really sick, 103 fever, we had to go rescue him from college after they had closed because of the coronavirus. And uh, you know, we didn't know what he had. He got tested and didn't have flu A or flu B or any other flus but he had a fever and he was coughing and he was weak and weary and boy, it sure looked a lot like the coronavirus. And about after about a week of having a high fever and temperature and everything else, we went and, and got him from school right away and, and got his girlfriend, who's a really sweet, dynamic Christian lover of Jesus who lives up north and, and her twin sister. And we got them all home and got them back up north to their home. So they're with their parents today on Easter and they're safe and had our son with us the last several weeks since then. But he went and he went to the doctor and the doctor kind of freaked out and said, I need to send you to emergency. I need to make sure that you're not carrying the virus because you may have it. And so my wife took him and went over to the hospital. They were waiting at emergency. They tested him. Okay, we'll get back to you in the next three to five days. After six, seven, eight, I told my son, Bryce, you need to call. We need to figure this out. But they didn't call and they didn't figure it out. It had to go to the CDC in Atlanta to get the test results. The long story short, we waited for 10 days and then got the results. No COVID-19, no coronavirus. Thank you, Jesus, that you protected our son and family. But for 10 days, there was concern. Not worry, not fear, but concern as parents that he may be sick with it. Look, you may be sick today. You may have lost a loved one and my heart goes out to you. Whatever you're facing today, whether it's sickness or finances, loss of job, whatever it may be with your family, children, addiction, I want you to know that there's a God in heaven that loves you and me and his son Jesus conquered the grave. There's a great song, it's called Mighty to Save and it talks about a savior that came to save us that everybody needs forgiveness, everybody needs compassion and the kindness of a savior. It goes on to say that Jesus, he can move the mountains, that my God is mighty to save, mighty to save, and that we just need to trust him as our savior. And he will move the mountains and care for us because God loves us more than anything else. 
you know, with everything going on and with the fear and scares and all the things that we're all going through. I'm in my office today because we're doing social distancing. But in a few minutes, I'm gonna share with you from Skid Row a message from last Easter because we can't do our big events. We can't close all the city blocks that we do and have thousands of people come. But I want you to know on Easter, we are serving the poor and the needy by the droves. They, our numbers have changed by two and 300% because some of the other missions are not serving right now. But we continue to, why? Because the state, the feds, our city, the mayor, they all want Fred Jordan Mission to continue to serve the poor and the needy because we cannot let people go hungry. So we give out hot meals and breakfast and lunch, water and drinks and Gatorade. We give gift bags and hygiene to help people. The one thing if you can help us with is send masks. Not that we wanna take them away from hospitals, but hopefully we'll get ahead of this soon where we can give masks to every homeless person Person. We just found out last week the first coronavirus patient was on Skid Row, but we can't let this go through our homeless population. Listen to me on this. If it does, it will kill so many. But we're trusting Jesus. We're going to continue to serve, continue to clean, and continue not to gather, but we are going to continue serving Jesus by serving the poor. Today, if you're worried, remember there's a God. He is mighty to save, He is the author of salvation. And Jesus did conquer the grave. Watch as I share this message from last year about how Jesus loves you and loves me. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Here we are again, downtown Los Angeles, Skid Row, LA. Right behind me, we're having a great event where we're preaching the gospel, sharing the good news that Jesus saves, and it's all happening right behind me here at Fred Jordan Missions. But you know that story, the gospel, Jesus saves, it really all started with God's love for us. It started with John 3.16. In John 3.16, it says that God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. It goes on to say that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. You know, Jesus spent his life serving. He was a servant. He was born in a manger, in a stable. That's like being born in a barn with the animals today. He didn't come as this powerful king to, to just disrupt everything, but he came to serve us. He came to give his life for us so that we could have life because sin had separated us from our Father. You know, Jesus was the bridge, the cross. The blood that was shed on the cross was the one thing and the only thing in history that could reunite us, a sinful man, with God, a holy God, and it was through Jesus. You know, he went around ministering to people, ministering to their needs. He cared for the poor, he cared for the needy, he cared for the hungry, just like we are and we have since 1944 here at Fred Jordan Mission. He went and he cared for the widows and the children and those in society that had been discarded, healing the sick, raising the dead, Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah that's still alive and well today. And you know, his ultimate, ultimate goal was to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what the Word of God says. He was the greatest servant of all time. 
And as we go on and read a little bit more from the scriptures, you'll see how Jesus touched people's lives in the Bible, in biblical times, but he still does on the streets here today. We see here Jesus ministering in Matthew 11. And it says this, after Jesus had finishing instructing the 12 disciples, he went on there to teach and preach in the town of Galilee. When John heard in prison what Jesus was doing, he sent disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come or should we be looking for someone else? And Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you have heard and what you have seen. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. You know, it's really interesting. John was the one who was to prepare the way of the Lord. John was one who was called by God to prepare for Jesus, the Messiah, to come. But it sounds like from the scripture there that John had his questions. Was it really Jesus that had come? Was it really Jesus or was it someone else? Was I supposed to wait for Jesus? He had doubts and as he sat in prison, I'm sure those doubts were stirring in his mind because here he was, the one called to prepare the way for the Lord and now he's in prison. But you know, God never promises everything will be easy. He never promises that we won't have trials and storms and struggles. In fact, he says in his word, we will have those things, but he does promise that he'll always be with us, that he'll never leave us or forsake us. And so as John sat in prison and he was having doubts whether Jesus was the Messiah, if John's purpose was to prepare the way of the coming of the Lord, then why would he be in jail? But Jesus answered John's questions and doubts by telling the disciples to go tell him that the acts of healing the blind, the lame, the deaf, curing the lepers and raising the dead and preaching the good news to the poor was evidence that it was Jesus, the Messiah, and not to doubt. Also, Jesus, by looking at all of those miracles and miraculous things and preaching the gospel, the good news, it was very clear that his identity was Jesus. If sometimes you doubt, because I've doubted before, who Jesus is, or if you're forgiven for your sins, or the work that God's done in your life, just look at the Bible, look at stories like this, look at the evidence that's there that Jesus saves, that Jesus heals, that Jesus delivers, that Jesus cares for us, and that will show you who Jesus really is. Also, if you just look at your own life and how Jesus and God himself have carried you throughout the years and the things that he's done in your life, you will see that God is very real and he's very much alive and well and ministering in and through your life. As we go on in this message, we'll see how my life and Paul's life had challenges and yet God proved to be faithful over and over and over again. When I think of my life and when I think of the Apostle Paul, you can see how God had a hand in changing us forever. Not here to compare myself with Paul. Paul was just another man. He was a great man though. He was one who knew the word of God. He was one that was well educated. He had many gifts. He was one of the Pharisees. He knew the Old Testament. He knew Judaism. But when Jesus came and Christianity started to catch fire and Jesus was doing all of these miracles and touching lives, Jesus was not the one he was looking for. You see, he thought that the Messiah hadn't come yet. 
Saul was a persecutor of Jesus and the church. And so as he persecuted the church, and you know, we can see throughout the scriptures where he was there for the murder of Stephen. He, he was a part of, of persecuting and taking prisoners of Christians and, and locking them up because he was so against it. But then he had a meeting on the Damascus Road with Jesus and Jesus caused him to be blind, and Jesus caused him to have some real struggles and trials, yet Jesus sent Ananias to pray for him, to take the scales off his eyes, and to show Saul who Jesus really was. And he took that life and that zealous life of persecuting him and Christians and turned it around, and he became the Apostle Paul, such a great leader in our faith, one who wrote a lot of the New Testament. And what a great example of God's grace and mercy, one who hated Jesus and persecuted the Christian church yet became one of the greatest Christian leaders of all time. Well, in my life, I grew up with Fred and Willie Jordan. I grew up on these streets of Skid Row watching my dad preach from those very platforms that are behind me. I watched my mom love and share the gospel with men and women and children forever. Yet my life wasn't always perfect. I chose to go my way. I always knew God's way, the way. The way, the truth, and the life, that's Jesus. Yet in my sinfulness, in my selfishness, I chose to follow my own path. And it was only at one point in my life where I actually met my now wife, Chris, that I just knew that I needed to give my life to Jesus. I knew that the truth was the truth, and I knew that the truth is what sets us free. But you can't be set free from the truth if you're not gonna live it, walk it, believe it, and allow it to change you. And for so many years, I just did my own thing, drugs and alcohol, and, and just tried to run from God. And really, I was running from my calling of being a leader, a minister, a pastor, and one who God could use, because it always scared me. I gotta be my dad, I've gotta be Fred Jordan. You know, I have to be like Paul, I have to be like Billy Graham. No, I realized I just have to be Joe. And that day that I realized that I can just be me, and I can just be whoever that is, and that God will use me however, little, small, it doesn't matter, that I could just be faithful with my life and gifts, and that Jesus would use me, I realized, wow, I gotta get my life right. I called my dad and said, Dad, you gotta come down to the Coachella Valley. You have to lead my girlfriend to Jesus. He dropped everything, he came, and he came and walked Chris through the Gospel of John where she got saved. A few minutes later, I said, Dad, before I die, before the enemy takes me out, before there's no hope left, I was so panicked that I needed to get right because I knew the truth, and yet I was doing my own thing. I felt like I was walking on a tight wire. My dad came in and my mom and it was in their bedroom and I wanted to give my heart to Jesus yet I couldn't speak. I don't know how to explain it to you but I was bound and the enemy was doing everything he could to just pour condemnation and guilt and shame on me because I knew the truth but I wasn't walking in the truth. And after about three hours, three hours of torment where I was crying, but I couldn't say Jesus, I couldn't even open my mouth. I was so scared that I would never get back to Jesus Christ and to a relationship with him because if I couldn't say his name, I couldn't be set free. And finally, my dad looked over at Chris after about three hours and said, Chris, pray for him. And here she was, five minutes old in Jesus as a believer, and all I remember is she prayed something like this, Dear Jesus, help my baby. And my mouth flew open. It was so amazing that that simple prayer of faith by my girlfriend then, trusting Jesus to help me at that moment, Jesus heard that cry of that little newborn child, that new Christian, and then broke free all the bondages that the enemy was binding me with, and I could say, Jesus. And I remember just crying out to Jesus, crying out to Jesus, asking for forgiveness, repenting of all of the sin that I had, and all of the rebellion and running from God, and receiving his gift of salvation, rededicating my life, and getting rid of all that guilt and shame. You know, if we go long enough running from God, hiding from God, or not following Jesus, and we know the truth, that guilt will eat you up. 
and it will destroy you. My encouragement to you, as I encourage those today when I was preaching earlier, is this. If you know who Jesus is, surrender, give up, and just let Jesus take control of your life. It's been now over 30 years since I gave my heart back to Jesus. My wife has been my wife for over 30 years, and we've served Jesus hand in hand. It's never been perfect. We still struggle with trials and storms in our life, but Jesus is always with us through it all. He'll be with you through it all also. So if you're struggling, if your child's struggling, grandchildren, spouse, or anyone in your life is struggling, I would just say, just cry out to Jesus, the author, the perfecter, and the finisher of our faith. Because we know if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we can be saved. The resurrection power of Jesus that raised Jesus from the dead will raise you and me to life. So we just need to give him our heart. So I encourage you today, if you haven't given him your heart, give him your heart. If you have, then you've walked away, then rededicate your life and just say, today, Jesus, as my dad would say, sink, swim, heaven, hell, live or die, I'm gonna serve you the rest of the days of my life. And if you do that, you will be changed for eternity and have peace and hope and know that you'll go to heaven when this life is over. I just encourage you to follow Jesus because there's not a better or safer place in your life to be. God bless you. At Fred Jordan Mission, every day there are great needs because the people are in great need. And those needs continue to grow. They really don't diminish. The Word of God says that the poor will always be with us. And we see in LA every day the poor and the needy, the homeless, grow, grow, and grow some more. And so there's great and tremendous needs there. But also, we have the Word of God. We have the Gospel that's preached there every day, and it never changes. It's the thing that brings the power to all that we do. It is salvation to those who listen and heed the Gospel and the message of Jesus. You see, we share the love of Jesus to all of those needs. But without you and without the word, we wouldn't be able to meet those needs. We're so grateful that as the needs continue to grow, that he is there and he brings partners to us who can help meet the needs. I just wanna thank you for being a part of sharing the gospel with us and caring for the needs of people because the needs will always be there. But we will always have the gospel of Jesus Christ, the hope of the world, to share to meet those needs. We want to stay connected with you. In today's day and age, it's so easy to do. So I want to personally invite you to join us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Connect with us at social.fjm.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you. In closing today, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you so much. He loves you. He cares about you. He has a plan for your life. And he wasn't caught off guard at all by this COVID-19. No, before the foundation of the earth, before he even created this world and you and me, he knew exactly what would happen in 2020. He knew that a little over 2,000 years after he was hung on the cross and he rose from the dead, he knew that we would be facing this in our world. He knew that most of our world and America would be shut down and crippled by this in some way, shape, or form. But look, we aren't crippled because we know that our future is in the hands of God. We know that our trust needs to be in Jesus. If you've trusted Jesus today for your
for your salvation and, and to be your Lord and Savior. That's awesome. If you haven't, I want you to know that the message I shared with you from John 3, 16, and that God loves you is so real that he's there for you through any crisis, this one and any that will come in your life, whether it's your health, finances, where you live, your family, whatever the circumstances are in your life, God is with you and Jesus cares. He wants to save us all because that's why he came to seek and save that which was lost. But I need your help. We need your help. As a ministry, the, the, the needs are growing exponentially. We are facing things today that we've never faced before. Other missions shutting down from serving hot food and meals and other things. And we're taking on more and more and more. And it's not a bad thing. We want to serve Jesus by serving the poor because we are called to declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus and the gospel to the Coachella Valley, to Skid Row, at Fred Jordan Mission, and wherever God calls us. But we need you. We need you because more food, more water, more drinks, more hygiene kits, more of everything, shoes, socks, and blankets are going out to those in need. Will you stand with us today? Will you become an impact partner? Even if you can only give $5 or $10, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. Some can give more, but whatever you can do, remember, I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing and others can do a good thing, but together we can do extraordinary things to serve Jesus by serving the poor. And remember this, in the weeks and months ahead, we're gonna have more people out of work and more people in need. Children in the Coachella Valley needing food, children in Los Angeles needing food, and of course, more homeless because without jobs and economics, people will fall homeless. Will you stand with us in Fred Jordan Mission as we've been doing this 75 years and we will continue with your partnership Jesus leading us and us walking with him in his guidance and direction to serve one soul at a time in Jesus' name. Happy Easter. Remember, he is risen and he is with you every day. God bless you. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.